All right, so today I'm going to show you guys how to measure if a fork is straight. And I'm going to do it three different ways, starting with the best and a slightly more expensive way to the worst and the most ghetto. So, I've got a couple of things here. I've got my uh, Fowler um, dial indicator. It's a it's a cheapy. They're like thirty or forty bucks, but it is kind of a useful thing to have. Got this piece of angle aluminum, which I am pretty certain is straight because the edge is kind of straight. It's still a factory edge. Uh, this will act as a ruler instead of because I don't have a long metal ruler, or I don't have a metal ruler long enough. I've got a couple of V blocks for rolling uh, the fork on them and then I have a good fork and then I have an upper from a fork that I know is crap so starting from the best method obviously a dial indicator is going to be uh, and v-blocks is going to be the most precise way of doing this so what I will do is I'll set up the fork on the v-blocks and then make sure that this is as perpendicular as it can be. If you're wondering where perpendicular is, it's the place where you'll get the highest or lowest, however you think about it reading. So, with it on the V-blocks, I am going to roll it while pushing down on the, uh, on the end. If you look, what I, I want to see is the needle not moving or moving while I'm turning the fork. When I'm re-gripping, it doesn't matter because at that point I'm, uh, you know, I'm moving the fork around. But as I'm turning it, that's what I'm interested in. Now, the other thing, the thing I just did wrong is I just measured deflection in the place where the triple holds it. That's not where forks bend. Forks bend between where the triple holds it and the lower body. So, let me move to the place where I should be, which is roughly over here, between between the triples and the lower fork leg. Uh, let me find the tallest point. And once again, I'm basically rolling it and watching the needle while I'm rolling it. When I'm uh, changing grips, it doesn't matter if it bounces around. All right, so now we're going to do... The bad one just so you can see what the difference is so once again I'm gonna set the put the needle down between the uh, where the triples end there happens to be a mark here and where the lower would have been so as I'm turning it you can see the needle move back and forth so it's gonna have a high spot and a low spot so you can see I'm pushing on the needle, I'm pushing on the fork, but as I'm turning it, the needle's really walking around. So this fork is somewhere, it's kind of rolling around between 35 and 70, so it's like 35 thousandths out. It's definitely not something that you'd want to use. All right, so, hey, dial indicators are expensive. Let's do... Um, Let's, let's do something cheaper, like $2 at Home Depot probably. So uh, what I did was I just kind of looked that there were no burrs on the edge. Um, and what am I going to do? I'm going to use it as a straight edge. So this may be a little hard to see. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it as perpendicular to the, as, as perpendicular to the leg as I can. And then in a couple of spots, I'm going to try that. And what I'm looking for is light between the edge of the allegedly straight thing and the fork. So this fork, we already know it's pretty straight, so we're not going to see any light. So what does this look like when the fork is actually bent? It's going to look kind of like this. See how... One, the straight-ish edge rocks back and forth over the high point. And two, you can see some daylight. So in a different part of the fork, you'll see some daylight in the middle. 
So that's using a straight edge. Hopefully you have something better than this, maybe a metal ruler or some, something that you know is going to be fairly straight. Fortunately, I don't have a allegedly bent fork but, uh, that I could do this with right now. But if you have absolutely nothing else, but you have a triple tree stand, you can do this by pulling off a wheel, loosening the triple clamps, uh, lo loosening the pinch bolts and the triple clamps, and then putting something, and it can literally be anything, but you have to put something near the bottom of the fork. That way you have a frame of reference. That way you can see if it's moving around, you can see it against the tip. This happens to be some whole alignment tool that I clamped into locking pliers. It could literally be anything. It could be a water bottle. It could be, uh, I don't know, something with a point though would really help. So what I'm going to do here is uh, the triples are loose but not that loose and i'm going to get to a point where uh the lower hits the uh triple tree stand and then give myself a way to see what's going on um now i'm going to turn it at the top let me go up a little bit i'm going to turn it at the top so that any bend in this area will be amplified because, you know, a little bit of an angle change over a long distance is a big deflection. So all I'm going to do is watch this distance and watch the lower and see if it moves around while I'm turning the fork in the triple. Now this won't be the most precise thing, obviously, but it will give you at least a pretty good idea if your fork is a complete mess or close enough. I mean, if it's eyeball straight, I would probably run it for street, for track days, for uh, higher performance riding. I would probably stick to using a real tool. So, yeah, that's how you check forks. Three different ways you can check forks. That doesn't doesn't mean there aren't other ones, but those are the three that I've had decent success with.